Okay, so uh, we're in game here, and uh, there's our cave entrance, which you know currently doesn't go anywhere. So we're gonna walk on our trigger and see what happens. The cave looks dark and scary. You hear the sounds of barks and growls from inside. What danger lurks in the darkness for you? So, there's our uh, there's our cutscene. Uh, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Uh, you know, I could have one of these at the entrance to a town, um, so that you know, a player comes in. We can show various camera angles around the town, watching the NPCs walk by in our scenes and whatnot. Um, pretty straightforward. If I wanted, if I, you know, if I'm a, a little bit more advanced with conversations and things like that, I can go back into the tool set now and modify. Uh, if you if you go back in conversation, you'll notice, or sorry, in the tool set, you'll notice that the plugin has created a uh, an Everwinter Nights 2 conversation file uh, with those lines in it, so you can go in and further enhance it. You know, change change some of the camera techniques that are used or whatever you want. Um, but yeah, you just you just go in and you edit it, and uh, anyway, you go. You don't want to modify the structure of the conversation too much because if you do, the plugin won't recognize it anymore. Um, but the nodes that are there, you can you know select each node and and change uh, you know the camera, maybe run a script if you have to or whatever you want to do there. The plugin ignores all of that stuff. So um, yeah, go in and customize. But there there you have it. You can have uh, basic uh, cutscenes just like that for your world. And uh, we'll go back into the tool set now and demonstrate the last. Uh, function of the info plugin and that is criers. Okay, so we're back in a tool set uh, again and uh, we want to demonstrate the last uh, piece of the info plugin and that is criers. Now the criers is probably the most uh, difficult part of the info plugin. In order to use criers you need to you do need to learn or do need to do a little bit of scripting so if you have some scripting knowledge this is where that's going to really come into play if you don't have a lot of scripting knowledge you can still leverage them but the real power of the criers comes from uh, people who can script a little bit now a crier is essentially an NPC that uh, you know stands around or walks around in a town shouting messages about events that are going on in the world you can have you know one in each town and they'll all shout events that occur or you can set them up so that only a particular crier will shout an event um, and, and what I mean by shout I don't mean shout messages across the server I mean just like speak in the local chat channel uh, around the area they're in so the the creation of the crier is really simple um, setting him up is really simple and getting him ready to accept messages is really simple the challenging part to come in is how you get a message into the crier so a crier comes in two parts he comes in with uh, the first part is an NPC the guy who actually is the crier and the second part is a uh, crier queue it's a placeable object that you can have um, you know, it can be an invisible object, it can be anything, it doesn't matter what it looks like, just as long as it exists in the area the crier is in. The queue is where he gets his messages from, so he'll con occasionally read his queue, his, uh, his crier queue, and find out if there's any messages in it for him to read off, and if there are, uh, he, he'll shout them. And the number of times he'll shout his messages uh, is configured in that configuration tool, where we where way back in the very beginning we fired up the plugin. Uh, configuration tool and it's a crier count and we left a default to three so that means he'll each time he finds a message in his queue he'll repeat it three times and then move on to the next message so the trick is getting those messages in and this is where your scripting skills will come in handy uh, if you're if you're even a novice scripter it'll be fairly easy to get messages into the queue some messages examples that you can put in are things like um, you know an item is plundered from a particular vault um, you know, a place is explored, something like that. Uh, whatever you really want. In uh, the Legends Info plugin um, and in the Legends plugin systems themselves, there are a few uh, events that you can leverage when you have a queue. For example, uh, on the death of a particular monster, I can put a variable on a monster um, and set it to one. And every time that monster dies, the crier will announce it. So that's what I'm going to demonstrate uh, on how how that's done. So the first thing we need to do is choose ourselves an NPC to act as our crier. So we're going to go and uh, find ourselves one. And humanoids. 
and there's our Cobalt King. Actually, I want an NPC for this. So we're just going to grab this guy here, and uh, we're just going to make a copy of him in our module. Oops. And we're going to set some properties on him so that you know he doesn't, he's not hostile and stuff. We don't want him, we don't want him going off and attacking us. So we'll just make him a commoner. And for our example, I don't want him wandering around. We just want to keep him in the one little spot that we that we place him down in. So we'll we'll do that. And the next thing we have to do is change his heartbeat script. Now again, if you're using the Legends AI uh, plugin, you don't have to do this step. It's already done for you. Um, but uh, for the default AI or any other AIs, we do have to make a modification here. So we'll do the same thing as we did when we did the on death of our Cobalt King. We uh, open up the default script or our other existing script. We'll create a copy of it. And we're only creating a copy because we don't. I don't like modifying the built-in scripts unless I have to, you know, fix a bug or something like that. But if I'm just adding functionality, I'll have my own script. So we'll custom heartbeat. That's the only reason why I'm creating a uh, a copy. Now, of course, like our death script for our critter, all we have to do is execute script leg underscore all master heartbeat object self. That's it. That's the only change we make and we now use that uh, script instead of uh, instead of the default one. Uh, if we were using our own custom AI we would just modify our AI script and add that to the bottom and that'll deal with any anything we need. So we'll apply that heartbeat script to his heartbeat event. H-E-A-R-T custom heartbeat right there. And that's it. So we'll leave that. And now we're ready to uh, <coughs> to um, not place him, but ready to run the plugin against him. So we'll have him selected in the blueprints and then we'll go into our uh, info plugin and we'll select Cryer and Q. And all we have to do for Cryer and Q is create a unique Cryer name. So we'll call this um, Cobalt Cave Cryer. He's the guy that hangs around Cobalt Cave. Uh, if he was a particular village Cryer, I may call it, you know, my village Cryer or something like that. That's all you have to do. You, cr you do that, you hit finish, and it says, you know, Cryer updated, and uh, ensure you place his Q. So we quit. So the first thing, obviously, we need to spawn our crier wherever we're going to be. So let's just spawn him right there. And then as the message told us, we need to place his Q. So if we actually open up our uh, placeable objects here, we'll notice under Legends Info there are there's now an entry called Cryer Qs. Here's the Cobalt Cave Cryer Q. So we can pick this item and we can place it in World right next to this guy it is an invisible object. Now I can change the appearance of this thing uh, if I like, um, but that's really the only thing I really want to change. I can change the size if I just want it to be something small. I can change it into a rock or whatever. I'm just going to leave it as an invisible object. The key part is that this cue matches this crier, so uh, it got created for me. If I need to edit that name or whatever, I just get rid of this cue and, and go and edit it and, and lay it again. Uh, so my crier and its matching queue have been placed, and I'm done. That crier is now ready to use. Also, the database is updated too because uh, criers use the database. So the database is done, the queue is done, and the crier is done. So now I have a working crier ready to receive messages. Now there are there's really uh, one way um, besides the Legends plugins. Uh, sometimes they'll inject messages when you turn those options on, but if you want to inject your own custom messages, you have to, this is where your scripting skills come in. I'm just going to demonstrate what you need to do to inject a, 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 a um, piece of information into a, into a crier's queue. And all you need to do is really is, uh, is three pieces of, three, four pieces, four lines of code anytime you want to inject a message. So I'm not going to write. I'm not actually going to write a full script here. I'm just going to demonstrate what you'd have to do. So let's say you have a script that uh, checks to see when an item was looted from the vault, 
you know, of, uh, of the town, of, the, you know, of, of City Hall or whatever. What you have to do is you have to execute a script, but it's an enhanced script. So 